are listening to the Necropolis Podcast, which is brought to you by Jason from Goatcraft and Shelly from HateMeditations.com and Metal Legion Magazine. Welcome to another edition of Necropolis, talking about classical music. So today, it's just going to be myself and Sebastian Ledokar, if I pronounce that correctly. I always mispronounce it, but uh, um, Sebastian, he is one of the guys who wrote a completion to Bruckner's uh, Knife Symphony, which uh, we had William Kerrigan on before. He was another guy who uh, uh, came up with completion and, you know, great uh, musical mind that we have on today. Um, and a very distinguished individual, which I'll have information about him in the description on YouTube if you're wanting to check out everything that he's been involved with. He does have a personal website. So, Sebastian, thank you for joining today for this discussion on Shostakovich. Hello, Jason. Thank you for inviting me once again on your show and your pronunciation of my name was fine very fine very no fine problem. okay <laughs> all right excellent so um for Sostakovich, um i've been listening to his music for since my early 20s um now 38 so getting up there in age not quite as old as sebastian here but he's been listening to Sostakovich since he was a teenager. Um, so originally I got into Shostakovich's music because I was already in the metal pretty hard. And uh, the, the very dark and brooding aspects of Shostakovich is what I was really drawn to early on. And then uh, going through all the symphonies, string quartets and concerti, I really started to amass this great love for Shostakovich. Perhaps he's not in my top five favorite composers, but he's definitely in the top 10 um, so, uh, it's kind of interesting today because, uh, Sebastian and I are both really into Anton Bruckner. So we're going to have two Bruckner guys talking about Shostakovich. So I'm going to preface this saying that we're definitely not experts on Shostakovich. Um, and, uh, if I misquote or anything like that, don't hold it against me. You know, I'm coming in just from a sheer love of the music itself. And uh, Sebastian's definitely more knowledgeable about uh, music than I am in general. He, he did teach it, and I uh, studied at a conservatory. So, uh, so let's delve into this Sostakovich. Um, everyone knows about the uh, the the history of Sostakovich, at least you know mainstream classical music um, about him. You know, being kind of having some difficulty in uh, the USSR back when uh, Stalin was running things and uh so just kind of delve into like the influences of Shostakovich because he's very off-kilter composer very whimsical at times to very some of the most deep and darkest recesses of music ever written so a good question kind of start out this program with like Sebastian who do you believe to be Shostakovich's influences uh many of his melodies are ambiguous like an impressionistic painting do you see a direct line from someone like Stravinsky, um, who also was very off kilter? You know, look at the Rite of Spring and you know, very brutal music, not unlike Sostakovich. Do you see a, a direct line from Stravinsky to Sostakovich? Um, the influences of Sostakovich, I, I would say, uh, Prokofiev, Stravinsky, and Sostakovich had the, the, the same teacher who, uh, who was uh, Rimsky Korsakov. So probably the Russian roots, I would say, come uh, from Rimsky-Korsakov, who was the, the main influence, and maybe also um, Piotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, who was the the great model symphonist uh, for, for every uh, Russian composer. But uh, um, Stravinsky and Shostakovich are very different because Shostakovich music, uh, as you said, um, is very brutal and emotional. Uh, there is a lot of uh, emotion in it. When uh, Stravinsky is probably more, how to say that, uh, distant. He wrote more distant and more mathematical, rhythmical music. And uh, just like its music has more guts, so to say. It's probably more direct also um, than Stravinsky's music. And I, I would so uh, I would say also that um, Shostakovich, like Tchaikovsky, was uh, very influenced 
and very interested uh, in, in, in Western music. So Bach, Beethoven, Wagner, Bruckner, and Mahler, of course, were, uh, I, I think, very important composers and influences for, for him. And as a composer myself, I, I would say that I'm, I am very interested mainly in symphonic music. Uh, I will not probably delve too much in, uh, into political and biographical uh, reflections about Shostakovich. I will try to focus as much as possible uh, on the music for itself, I, I would say. But um, there is something common also, we could say, between Stravinsky and Shostakovich is the, um, they used both polymodality and polytonality. But in the case of Shostakovich, I would say that, we, that there is a sort of, uh, it's, it's very often a sort of perverted, perverted uh, tonality. Uh, it's, it's, you, sometimes, uh, you know, his music is full of humor, of sarcasm. And sometimes it's, it sounds like someone playing or singing out of tune. But the, the intent was absolutely sarcastic or, or, or sometimes more, more, uh, so to say, uh, brutal or violent. And Stravinsky used it also, this, this kind of poly polymodal and polytonality, uh, uh, especially in the rite of spring, for, but you don't feel the sarcasm or the humor, the humor in, in, in Stravinsky. Yeah, and I know Stravinsky with the finale of the Rite of Spring, that's where he was very uh, innovative with the, 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 if I misstate this, please correct me, the, the, the rhythmic side of it, like he had like the polyrhythmic side of uh, the percussion on there. And it was just really interesting, like seeing conductors actually try to conduct that because they're all over the place trying to keep up with what the the music demands. But I was kind of thinking like the tonality, they're kind of similar. Um, but Sostakovich is his own beast. Um, and I've I've heard like we had a discussion about Pendereki, which uh I I, I went through Pendereki's catalog, that Polish composer who died a, some years back, and you you pretty much stated that he was like a poor man, Sostakovich, or um, very like diluted form of Sostakovich. But I, I, I did uh, enjoy his piano concerto, but as it comes for Sostakovich, I agree with you that there's much more authentic uh, gravitas to Sostakovich rather than uh, Penderecki, who seems to be like working within the modes of Sostakovich, but not as profoundly. Um, and definitely what you said about the whimsical aspect about that 15th symphony with the quotes to different composers, the Wagner and, you know, all that. I, I, I personally don't enjoy that, but you look at it like a more of a musical joke and you're able to appreciate it on that level. So anyway, next question here. Uh, Sostakovich is an enigma, um, especially in the Western canon of music. Um, some, some of his music conforms to the Western tradition of music, yet is also very idiosyncratic. What makes Sostakovich unique to you um, compared to Bartok, for instance, who operated in much similar forms, uh, Sostakovich? Uh, what makes Sostakovich really stand out? And just kind of add to that, um, uh, I, I view Bartok as uh, he fills in his melodies much more densely. Um, he, he packs in more musical content than Sostakovich, but Sostakovich is a thousand times darker. So uh, what, what really makes Sostakovich stand out to you? Mm. Bartok was not so much a symphonist. So we can compare uh, Shostakovich and Bartok uh, with the, the string quartets, for, for instance. And... Um, the language, the musical language of Bartok uh, was very dissonant. Uh, he had a very dissonant musical vocabulary, so to say. And partly it was inherited from the second Viennese school with uh, Schoenberg, Beck and Webern. But also he had uh, many influences coming from the Hungarian, Romanian and Bulgarian folk songs, where, for example, he used a lot of uh, melodies and uh, the specificities also of the the rhythm, uh, asymmetric rhythm uh, from Hungarian folks uh, music. Uh, when Shostakovich 
was you know you 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 raised the uh, you raised the, the point about the about the co the context in U USSR. Uh, Shostakovich was obliged uh, during a, a relatively long period of time of his life to compose, I would say, understandable, understandable uh, music for the common people, as the communist ideology required. Yeah, the the Kajetarian was like a, a great example of that, writing uh, music Absolutely. for the um, whereas Shostakovich, he was kind of lambasted. Um, and he didn't really write music for the proletariat like uh, Kachatarian did. Yes, and, and in, in the Soviet Union, too much dissonances and abstraction was considered, as, so to say, as an expression of subversive Western de de degeneration, you, you see. So even his most uh, intimate music, the, the, the chamber music, and especially the string quartets, uh, most of them have solid ton tonimodal grounds, I would say. And it, it's not so clear uh, with Bartok, who, who was uh, free to be more, so to say, uh, modern. And uh, the, the previous question about uh, what is, uh, why is Shostakovich, uh, Shostakovich unique to me? Um, I would say that his symphonies do not follow a specific scheme. When you re when we refer, uh, for example, to Bruckner, who had always the same kind of scheme, like uh, Gothic Cathedral. That's that's the the, the metaphor I, I like to use with Bruckner. Um, even even Mahler had it uh, was in in the I would say the the last uh, breath of the the Viennese uh, and German symphonic tradition so the the references even in the in 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 the two last symphonies were still very strong uh Mahler continued to to compose long sonata forms Lendler, Scherzi and so on uh, or R Rondo for example the finale of the seventh symphony so they, they were still very rooted in, in this kind of uh tradition and sometimes uh, Shostakovich is very influenced by this Viennese German symphonic music tradition and sometimes uh, not at all. So, um, for example, when you take uh, the, the, the second and third symphonies of Shostakovich, which I don't like, to be honest, uh, these are more, I would say, music, uh, pro pro propaganda music for, for the Soviet Union and uh, with a chorus at the end praising the, virtu the virtues of socialism and communism and, and praising Lenin and so on. The, first, the, the very first symphony is uh, the symphony from a student and quite experimental, but I, I don't feel this music as really being the very, uh, so to say, the, the, a, a very big convincing symphony. For me, the, the real First symphony of Shostakovich as being a, a, a big, great, convincing, and uh, very emotional symphony was the fourth. Yes, I agree. It's, with it's that. why it, it's one of my favorite, and it it, it is uh, probably his most violent, uh, the, the most violent work uh, for orchestra he ever wrote. It's complete uh, madness and free, and at the same time, you have a long moment of meditation of. Uh, and especially the, the end, which is yes. very uh, static and ambiguous, like like uh, uh, I, I don't know, like like like, like space music. I would say space completely music. lost. The, the the end of two thousand uh, one of uh, Stanley Kubrick. I see so, uh, this kind of 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 uh, atmosphere. Yeah, so, I revisited the fourth uh, a couple of days ago, and at the end that static moment that you're talking about it's very solemn and very sad and the the backing texture of that really sounds like a heartbeat to me and the xylophone when the xylophone comes in with the the dotted little line um it, it, i perceive it like uh this musical being with tears falling to the ground that's the way that i perceive it um and it's, you know when music can conjure up such great images such as that it's definitely good stuff
Yeah, I definitely revisited the the fourth after many years of not listening to it. Enjoyed it, and the the Dallas Symphony here will be performing in April. I'll be checking that out. Um, but yeah, I consider that to be definitely the 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 first real authentic uh, masterwork of Sostakovich. I know. Uh, another question I have is in regards to the fifth symphony, which came after that, and uh, I've seen quotes from Sostakovich. You know, he already brought it up. He was into Mahler and Bruckner. He was a big champion of Bruckner, too. Like, uh, keep in mind that the the Nazis repackaged Bruckner and uh, propagandized his music. And uh, having a composer like Sostakovich out there after that, you know, still talking fondly of Bruckner, um, kind of helped soften that blow to what the Nazis did. But uh, in that Fifth Symphony... The finale of that absorbs the themes from prior parts of the symphony, not unlike Bruckner's Fifth Symphony does. So do you believe that Sostakovich was really inspired by Bruckner with uh, the way he constructed his Fifth Symphony? After the Fourth Symphony, you have um, the, the Fifth to the Tenth Symphony. And the, the set of symphonies, I I would say, are more... Viennese and German symphony symphonies influenced, and the fifth, especially, is a very classical, so to say. And probably you know that the the, the context of this symphony, because in uh, nineteen thirty six, uh, Stalin was um, uh, rejecting the 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 opera of uh, Shostakovich, Lady Macbeth's District of Umsensk. And uh, the, this opera was declared as being uh, the chaos, uh, dissonant, non, um, not coming from a, a good Soviet, uh, from a, gun, a good uh, Russian Soviet guy. So he had to apologize. And the Fifth Symphony, being very classical, the, the Fourth Symphony we, we, we talked about just a minute ago was extremely violent and was never performed before just it was uh, I think the, the first performance was in 1960 yeah, so 1963 he, I believe and and so the, so the fourth symphony the the, the the first performance was planned I, I think in in 35 or 36 in, in uh, around that time and and Chostakovich uh, decided to cancel it because it was too dangerous in this context with Stalin and, and the, the rejection of his opera, Lady Macbeth. So the, the, the official title was uh, this kind of uh, apologize to uh, the symphony is my apologize to a fair criticism from the Soviet party. Uh, so, uh, uh, but you can feel in this music, uh, even it is, if it is the language uh, is more tonal and modal and not so dissonant as the fourth symphony uh, you can feel the, the 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 big tension in it and the ending of the this symphony is it Bruckerian I would say yes and no yes because of the long the, the, the large scale of the entire symphony you know, we can feel this just in the beginning of the first movement. We have long phrases, long developments, just like like in Bruckner's uh, slow movements, for example, very long phrases, long development. And, um, and the ending of the fifth as well as the seventh symphony is uh, are indeed very Bruckerian because of the brass, the, the large, uh, large coda. But this this ending of the fifth is is it really a positive ending? That's that's the question. Bruckner always had a, a conception of uh, going from sometimes from darkness to the light or the, re the resurrection uh, with in the the Catholic and, and Christian faith. That's not abs absolutely not uh, the message uh, I think here in the in Shostakovich Fifth Symphony, because the the, the ending in D major the D major is uh, hammered I would say with the note A repeated again and again in the violin violin parts, and the bass drum uh, of the last bars for example sounds like uh, for me that 
maybe it's a, a simplistic uh, image, a, a simplistic metaphor, but it's like a, a tyrant uh, walking on the head of, of his own people. And Shostakovich himself said that explicitly that the, 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 the last bars, the, the last minute of the symphony was like a, a sort of loudspeaker screaming at people, you have to be happy, you have to be happy, uh, socialism is working. It's he it's heaven. So it's 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 a, it's a sort of um, you know this enthusiastic Soviet parades and people dancing and throwing flowers and walking like G's. Uh, you know the, the the kind of the kind of collective uh, lie and hysteria we, we we still can observe today in Russia. Actually, I would say, and I I think that uh, the Shostakovich. Uh, try to maybe that's that's how i feel this music and it it is also how we present uh the ending of the, the symphony uh it's it's an uh, in sort of uh, imposed joy imposed happiness uh, communism cannot fail i see and uh so with the fifth symphony i know that in uh it's the most popular here in the west Usually, like if a symphony, a local symphony plays Sasha Coach Five, it, it sells out really well. Um, it tends to be his most popular symphony, which, you know, for me, it's definitely, I, I'm into the, the later symphonies, which we can get into. Um, but uh, it's kind of interesting about it being Soviet propaganda with the, the finale and uh, it still being like the most popular symphony by Shostakovich here in the West. So that kind of strikes me as odd because especially in America, uh, there was great anti-communist sentiments back then. It was, it, was, it was propaganda of its own kind that we, we have to stop communism everywhere in the world. Wherever Russia was going, spreading communism, like in the Vietnam and all that, we had to step in there and stop that. So it's kind of interesting that the fifth is a, uh, a nod to you know the socialism of you know the USSR, um, and it was but a out, outside maybe this uh, contextual and political explanation, I think that the fifth uh, is very popular, uh, and as well the, the seventh also. It's it's very uh, often performed also. It's uh, it, and it had the same success in the uh, in the United States because. Uh, it was Toscanini who performed him. The, uh, he was the first to perform it in the United States. Uh, I think it it, had, it took place in in New York. I, I can cannot remember, but I think that the fifth is a uh, has a very classical shape. You know, the, the first movement, slow introduction, and then a, a, a sonata form, which is a, a, a clear sonata form. The second movement is even like a menuet. It's a dance. Uh, or a sort of valse. The slow movement is uh, very malarian, I would say, very meditative uh, and intense at the same time. And the finale, uh, you, you know, starting with a sort of, of uh, fury and madness and, and ending with this massive and desperate D major, but uh, of forced happiness, I would say. But uh, the shape, the form are very classical. Maybe the effectiveness of uh, the impact of the this symphony comes from from that. When, when for from, when when you, co you compare to the fourth symphony, the the, the 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 music is much more dense and much much more difficult to understand because it's much more experimental uh, and not so uh, easy. To, to listen to because the music is the music is extremely violent and not so expressive it's not so lyrical i, I would say yeah um, the fourth he believed he would also go to like a gulag for uh writing that um if it was actually you know premiered and all that which i think they did do rehearsals of the fourth yes uh, and, and this uh, shostakovich decided to cancel it because it was too, too dangerous but I, I think that the, the fourth was uh, really the, the 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 reflection of what the the, the the Russian people were experiencing during during the the Stalin era. It, it was a uh, absolutely horrific. 
and you can feel it, uh, you, even if it's abstract music, but you can feel it, the, the context uh, in which the, the music was composed. It's it's in, impossible to ignore it. Yeah, I mean, the, the historical backing to Sostakovich, what was happening there in Russia, certainly uh, makes it more interesting, like an epiphenomenal aspect of it, or like a byproduct of the music is, you know, the the relevance behind the society in which Sostakovich was living. kind of ask another question here and move on uh so i i think a great divide I, like we, we exchange a lot of words to each other all the time and you know you're turning into a pretty cool friend of mine um and i enjoy your insight on a lot of various different things but one of the divides in our approaches to music in general is that you love polyphony like polyphony is it that's why you love full symphonies because there's a lot of polyphony in symphonies and uh you're not so much keen to like a uh, cello concerti or violin concerti um you probably like uh piano concerti quite a bit since you know polyphony could be performed on piano and the orchestra but when it comes to like a uh, violin concerti is you know there's sections where just a violin is just playing on its own and sometimes the uh the symphony the orchestra behind it may just you know play a chord here or there that's going along with the the violinist so and and in terms of like when we're approaching music that is heterophonic where you have one melody being played and you have a um back accompaniment yeah the accompaniment of backing chords something like that is heterophonic and heterophonic mu music music I believe personally is uh it relies a lot on the melody itself, the strength of the melody 
Whereas in polyphony, you have different melodic lines interweaving together for its general impact. And it's, it's not only polyphony, but it's also the notion of um, combinatory music. When you combine different ideas and you develop them, and it's it's not um, possible when you compose a, a concerto for uh, any instrument. Maybe a, a piano concerto, you can you can do something more elaborate in, in terms of uh, indeed a polyphony, but with a violin or cello concerto, the, the, there is all, always this this role of the soloist to be the star of the uh, on the podium, you know. And I, I I don't like this concept, uh, not only as a show but uh, as a musical concept. I have some problems. Maybe the the, the concerto I prefer is uh, the, the violin concerto of Sibelius, but it's it's a, so personal and it's he he treated that so um, with such genius that I have the feeling I don't listen to a to a. A concerto because the violin is so well integrated. There is such a an organic dialogue with the orchestra, but you don't have that in so many uh, of uh, concerto, Brahms, Schumann, cello, violin concerts, so Dvorak, even uh, or even Beethoven. Uh, there is this, always this concept of the violin or the the soloist is is the star and he has to show off. I don't feel that with uh, the violin concerto of uh, Sibelius. I mean, I in uh, when I approach concerti like violin concerti, uh, cello concerti, etc. You know, I, I come from a place that I, I I like the strength of the melody itself, and it it could be one sole melody if it's really good that I'll enjoy it like. That's very cool melody, and like listening to it, it's very has power of its own. Just the sheer melody, and just having some accompaniment to it, you know, I'm able to listen to that and enjoy it immensely. But I, like I said, this is where we kind of divide, and it's good to talk about this because. Uh, but the, I, I think that's that's more interesting to have, uh, for instance, a, a solo. Um, violin or solo cello in a symphony and in it, when it is integrated in something bigger than you know, like Shahar, list, right? list, like listening Korsakov, half right? or, uh, yes for instance but uh, then listening to a half hour of a, of a cello concerto or a violin concerto it's it becomes re uh, redundant for me uh, i see well, that's where we kind of diverge. And I think the main reason why we diverge on that is because I do listen to metal still and I love metal music. And this is a metal podcast, but we get into different topics. So a lot of my listeners, if they don't know what heterophonic music is, they sure do listen to a lot of it. But um, I just I thought it would be great to bring up polyphony and you know heterophonic just to kind of compare the two and contrast them especially you being a big proponent. And I know you're a composer yourself, really into polyphony um, when you write music and having numerous melodic lines intermeshed together and, you know, convey a greater purpose than the sum of its parts. That's essentially what polyphony is. Um, whereas in heterophonic music, you have the, there's just the strength of the melody itself to go by. Um, so that's great that we're able to elaborate on that. And, there are some heterophonic aspects of Shostakovich. Um, you listen to the some of the opening bars of the 12th Symphony. You know, there is some polyphony there, but it goes to these different sections of heterophonic to polyphony, and it switches between the two. And I would definitely tell my listeners on oh, this podcast, if you know, in the metal and all that, check out the 12th Symphony because it's almost like Proto Slayer and uh, very cool things going on with that. But, uh, just to kind of get back with that, um, what are your general thoughts uh, in terms of polyphony and heterophonic music? Uh, how do you kind of view the 12th century? I know you don't view it that highly as you do with like the 10th and the 8th. No, it's a good symphony, uh, and as well as the 11th. But after the 10th symphony, the, the 8th, 11th and 12th symphony, for me, are like film music. 
and I'm not disturbed by the, the long introduction, heterophonic heter introduction of the 12th symphony, be because it's simply in the low string, the presentation of the, of the big theme of the symphony, simply. So I'm not disturbed or, or uh, annoyed by heterophonic music or parts in the music. It depends on what, what you do with it after, after, after all. So, um, but why do I consider this, uh, these two 11 and 12th symphonies as being more film music as, uh, um, comparison to the, the, the previous symphonies from fifth, uh, fourth to, to, to 10th symphony? It's because, um, it's more descriptive, especially the 11th symphony, because it's, uh, both, these both symphony have, have um, have a, a title. And the, the 11th, it's the, the year 1905, the bloody Sunday when the, 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 the army of the Tsar shoots uh, on the crowd. Or it's, it's a insurrection moment of the, of the Russian history. And the, the 12th symphony is dedicated to Lenin and it's about the, the 1917 R Russian revolution and communist revolution. So, uh, and uh, as you know, Shostakovich composed a lot of film music. And I think when you, you listen to this film music and you compare uh, the 11th and the 12th symphony, he used uh, in these two symphonies all his tricks and the characteristics he, he used. The music is maybe a little bit less sophisticated, more direct, and he used a, a lot of uh, of orchestra tricks, I, I, I am sure. I, I guess John Williams learns a lot of stuff from these two symphonies. To wrote his his, in, his his own his own music, and after the the, the eleven and twelve symphonies, you have the the thirteen and fourteen symphony, who are for me not not symphonies at all, but more like cantatas. The the, the thirteenth symphony, like is a is a symphonic cantata. About Babillard, um, and once again from history, mm, about history, and the 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 fourteenth symphony is a, a, a cantata, but only for uh, two soloists and, and string orchestra and and uh, some percussion. When the the thirteenth symphony is a, is a full orchestra and the, the vocal parts is for male male chorus, but. But the, I, I don't feel this, this work as being real symphonies, more something like I, I, the best word I, I can find is cantatas. And, and then you have the last, the last symphony, the 15th symphony, which is a sort of synthesis. Yeah, it we, is, we, we talked about so this before, the, the 15th symphony. Um, yeah, uh, we, we diverge on here as well, where you know, you look at it more like a musical joke because he references the William Tell overture and he, you know, quotes some Wagner in there. And I can't listen to it from that sheer point of view because um, I, 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 when I approach a composer, I want to listen to their music. I want to listen to them, just them. And I don't want to hear other people's music in their own music. So that's why I do not like the 15th Symphony. Um, but you you enjoy it from like a more cerebral level, like you view it as a great comical joke, correct? Yes, you can already find this kind of uh, witty spirit in the Ninth Symphony, uh, because uh, on a, a, another anecdote, uh, the Ninth Symphony has a, a is very symbolic because you have the 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 shadow of Beethoven once again and the ninth symphony was supposed at that time to be uh, once again a big huge choral symphony praising yeah. Stalin and the Soviet regime and so on and uh, just like we ju ju just wrote a symphony of just twenty five minutes very Haydnian very classical but full of jokes of humor yeah and whimsical and, very whimsical and, too. So, so, so the, the absolutely not grandiose music at all. Very funny. Only the slow movement is is very melancholic and very intimate. But the, the rest is very jokey. 
And you can find this this uh, once again in the in the first movement of the 15th symphony. But the jokes here are, uh, I would say, there is some some of uh, sort of bitterness in it and and darkness. But still, this, this this sort of sarcastic humor is still there, and the first movement is is half serious. At the same time, you have uh, very experimental polyphony in it, and, and development is is very sophist sophisticated. And, and the appearance of the first movement seems to be very funny, uh, full of joke, but yeah, uh, the, the composition is very sophist sophisticated and, and elaborated. And I, I think that the whole symphony, the, the second movement is is a the slow movement is very dark, very meditative, very deep music. The scherzo it's very short and it, it's a very it's, it's quite a, a sort of chamber music inside a, a big symphony with for for big orchestra. But the scherzo is very short but very uh, also, also very sarcastic, and the finale is based on a, on a huge. Uh, Pasakai, and indeed uh, with uh, quotations from from Wagner, but um, I think that these quotations are more uh, jokes. In in the case of the first movement, quoting uh, William Tell uh, of of Rossini, and homage, we'd say uh, concerning Wagner in in the finale, and, and also he uses uh, as uh, many times also in the in the tenth symphony. The DSCH motif, uh, which is his uh, musical signature four notes, da, 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 uh, which makes uh, DSCH uh, Shostakovich, Dmitri Shostakovich. So he used this uh, in the symphony, and I, I, I'm not disturbed at all by, by all these elements. I think it's integrated, it's, and the music is fascinating. Um, and I think also that Shostakovich had a very, a very powerful imagination, like uh, uh, Bogan Williams. Also, these people had a, 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 a sound, sound imagination and a cr incredible sound image imagination. That, that that's that's a, uh, that's for sure for me. I Great genius. And Shostakovich, he didn't know about Dvorak. Correct, because Dvorak wrote a very massive Ninth Symphony that's very popular today, The New World. Um, but at that point in time, no one actually knew that was Dvorak's Ninth Yes, the, 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 the scores of the four uh, first symphonies of Dvorak, uh, the, the, I think the, the first symphony was lost, and uh, the, 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 the two, three, and fourth symphony of Dvorak was were edited uh, long, long years uh, in, in the 60s or 70s uh, later. So for, for a long time, uh, many people uh, thought that there was only uh, five symphonies of Dvorak. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. So everyone was expecting something grand coming from Shostakovich, and here he is with a very short whimsical symphony um you know that's like the original version of subverting expectations like he's the ryan johnson the classical music but uh um just to you know just kind of talk about you know aspects that we love about shostakovich with specific pieces what are your favorite works by shostakovich I would just make uh, a last comment before uh, answering you, your question. A last comment about th this uh, Ninth Symphony of Shostakovich, because we have to be aware that he took risks by writing such a music when the instances of the, the Soviet party uh, expected a, a big, serious choral work with soloists and so on, and a big symphony of one hour. So he was capable of being very provocative and subversive. And I think there is a, a kind of, of hidden arrogance uh, or, 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 or the, his humor is, is a sort of a way for him to express his anger, his deep anger also. And my favorite symphonies of Shostakovich, I, I would say the fourth, the eighth and the, the last one, the, the 15th. Why the fourth? Because um, uh, we already told about that. Uh, uh, because of the, the, 
this this these waves of violence of sound of uh, also the um, the, the huge Im musical imagination he had and the the works the, the, the symphony seems messy at first uh, at first hear, hearing i would say but uh, indeed it's it's the first movement the first long first movement it's approximately 25 minutes it is a sonata form and you have just to familiar uh, to be familiar with the, the the themes and when you recognize you begin to to uh, understand the, the the structure and in in the in the center of this this first movement you have a, a, an an incredible fugue with very fast um uh, motive in the strings and it, that's that's absolutely crazy to play uh, to perform for an orchestra and 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 the fugue uh, rushes then uh, in, in sort of of mad uh, mad uh, march or I don't know how to describe this but the music is absolutely insane and the the the, the music is extremely powerful and and it, it takes to the, the the guts really really but it's not probably not his most profound and for me the most profound is the eighth by far and i think the seventh symphony is the leningrad symphony it's supposed to describe once again political content content it's supposed to to describe the you know the, the nazi attacking leningrad leningrad and the war the war against the nazi and then the the victory of the, the the red army against the nazi and you have the, the ending of the seventh symphony being uh, very loud and very in c major and very triumphant and very brilliant and full of 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 victory but i don't think it's it's completely uh, a war symphony in in the sense that it's more uh, how to say an image of the war and and at the same time a sort of propaganda message when the eight the eight i think is the real feeling and uh, how um, uh, experiencing war you, you know when people were uh, eating horses or, or, or starving in, in leningrad yeah so yeah in, i shared an article where uh, i think they're actually going to play the the seventh symphony in leningrad and what happened was like everyone was starving to death over there and they were eating dogs cats horses and all that and i know even shostakovich um he was living in leningrad for a while but he had to leave and he went through periods of great poverty and starvation too um but it's kind of crazy that with that seventh symphony you know being called leningrad and the orchestra is trying to perform that they're still, you know, still starving when they try to perform. I believe it was the seventh that they were trying to perform. Um, but yeah, yes, yes, there was a BBC article on it. If anyone's curious about reading about that very, very hard times under the USSR. And uh, yes, it's propaganda music. Like you stated, go ahead with your favorites. Um, and the eight uh, is not only, uh, a, a, uh, an extremely moving, uh, moving music, but it's also uh, from the formal and compositional point of view, extremely perfect. It, it's uh, an, an arc in five movements. So there you have the model of Mahler, the fifth symphony of Mahler, the seventh symphony of Mahler. You can find this this model in five movements, and. Um, uh, uh, with the scherzo in the center, like in the in the the, the fifth and seventh symphony of Mahler, and there is a, a very logical progression, and uh, the, the 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 beginning of the, the the first movement is a is is the same model as the first movement of the of the fifth symphony, but more developed and, and probably a, a deeper uh, of deeper meaning because you can feel in this music. Uh, uh, I sent you um, Theodor Kurenzis uh, rehearsing the, the first movement of the of the Eighth Symphony with a, a German orchestra, and maybe the conductor is is uh, a lot, maybe a, too much talkative. But I, I think the 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 results he get from the orchestra and and the, the some some comments he, he did 
he made or uh, during the rehearsals are extremely relevant and convincing and you can um everything is in english so you can share it uh to your your uh, listeners yeah i'll have, a, I'll have and, a link in the and, description and, so and this, this 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 rehearsal is absolutely uh fascinating and you can deep uh, you can delve into the music itself and you can feel how the how the the, the harmonies the colors of the orchestra are so 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 penetrating uh and the music is absolutely incredible for me that's that that's the there is a recording i love uh and you know i i, I like very much the the, the set of bernard hating uh, and he did some uh, especially with the concert gabor and the, the eight is uh, for me still the, the best recording of it by far it's extremely impressive uh it's 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 perfect so to say that the, the orchestra and the performance everything it, it's intense the orchestra plays perfect it's clear that the, the sound engineering is incredible and the music is so powerful that that's incredible and um i i love i, I deeply love this music uh, for for many reasons not only formal uh, but also deep, deeply uh, deeply emotional
And the 15th symphony, uh, but I, I already talked uh, about this symphony, and it's it's all it's a sort of uh, I would say um, uh, crepuscular music symphony because I I think we we can uh, feel that Shostakovich had the, the was aware that he was going to die, and by the way, the ending of the this symphony is uh ending with, with sort of mechanical noise and uh, some people uh, say that that was the noise when you are at the hospital with the ma the electronic ma machinery uh uh keeping you alive yeah so that, that, that is, uh, the way he died was very tragic um i know um he drank a lot of vodka in his older years but he also fell a lot he broke bones by falling and eventually he developed lung cancer and died. So, um, very sad. When, when you see, when you see some videos of, of him, uh, the last years of, of, of his life, you, you can see how emotional and nervous and anxious this guy, uh, but I think he, he was also like a sponge. He was a guy, a very empathic and humanist person. And, uh, he went through hell. Uh, for for a long period for long periods of his life and you you can see it on his face and he he he, he had a hard life for sure and you, you can feel it in in his music and it's a miracle that a, a guy having such a hard life was capable of composing so much powerful and 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 so emotional and so uh human deeply human and generous music and some of the darkest music ever too. Like uh, yes, yes. Um, so that's initially why I was drawn to Sostkovich when I was younger, was because of the brooding dark aspect of it. Um, but again, some of my favorites. I know we have different opinions. Like you don't like uh, the first violin concerto, but I feel like the Pasquaglia to that is one of the darkest pieces I've ever heard. Um. I think we both have a shared appreciation for the Tim Symphony. Tim Symphony is very compact, a lot of musical content in there. Uh, a lot of slow moving moving parts and then uh so the first movements, you know, very slow and then you get to the quote-unquote scherzo, the fast bombastic movement 
And I heard it might have been Maxim Sostakovich who said this, but um, I heard the the second movement to the tenth is a ugly depiction of Stalin's face. So um, it was like a depiction of Stalin's ugly face in musical form. And uh, I love that too because it goes through all the whimsical stuff that Shostakovich was kind of known for, and you know the sheer craziness, like very bombastic. And uh, it gets into the powerful section with the brass and in a great polyphony there i'll give you that but um, it's a it's a very difficult movement to play for orchestras because it, there was a, there were a lot of uh, recordings and uh, concerts available on youtube of, of this symphony and when you listen to the, the scherzo after a few bows systematically or i would say nine times of, out of ten the orchestra slow down because it's so difficult to keep the tempo but there is a, a one one version, one recording which is very convincing. That's the recording once again of uh, Bernard Hating with the London Philharmonic, and the, he nails it in four in four minutes. But that's that's crazy, and the, the orchestra is steady and square and and brutal and and precise. That that's that's sharp. That's that's very 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 effective. Uh, uh, that's a very very good recording of it of this schedule. The rest of of the, the 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 recording, I'm not so convinced because the pacing is for me too slow, especially for the first movement. But the the schedule is is really uh, convincing. Yeah, uh, if you have a recording of that, send it to me. Um, but uh, uh, like like you're saying, like uh, it goes through the scherzo, very bombastic and. Uh, whimsical, um, and then para- very powerful and dark for a brief moment, and that's supposed to describe, supposedly, uh, Stalin's ugly face. So I love that.
right after that, you're, you're back to another slow movement and then another slow movement, which turns into a fast movement. And uh, I, I feel like that is like the most dark and brooding, like complete symphony that Shostakovich wrote. And then, uh, of course, we talked about the 12th already. I feel like the 12th is a good symphony to introduce metalheads to. If they want to hear, but I like I like it a lot. Eleventh and and twelve are, are very fascinating, well written, beautiful symphonies, but no doubt. Yes, but uh, you know, we already talked a little bit about you know the heterophonic forms in there and all that, but I feel like that it relies on the melody itself. And you shared a phenomenal recording. It was Heintink, is that correct? Yes, uh, for the eleventh also. Concert Gebau Amsterdam, that's 11th and 12th symphony, 8th symphony, that's reference recordings by far. You can find, uh, you can find better recordings. I, I listened to dozens of, of them for, for these symphonies, but uh, hating is by far the, the best. Yeah, uh, certainly phenomenal the way um, it starts out with, uh, I've never heard it played so organically and fast, and it's wonderful. And uh, there is a slight reverb to it, and I feel like the reverb um, the acoustics it's, it's from the whole yeah the acoustics it it helped heighten the experience quite a bit um but yeah that's the best recording i've heard of it um i would view that as another favorite of mine the 12th symphony because it does go through those early bars where it sounds very metal in some ways and then the it completely ends in a percussion fest it's very powerful with the percussion and i, I feel like that is like the one of the most quote unquote metal symphonies, just talking about the, the musical aspects of it. Um, but yes, the, it is you know not complete polyphony. Um, there are a lot of heterophonic moments to it, in which you would kind of attribute to like film music, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that, that's the style of film music, uh, usually, and you can find this, this kind of uh characteristics with. For example, for instance, I was uh, John Williams. Right. So other than the, the 12th, I like I talked about the violin concerto, the first one. Um, I like the uh, two cello concerti um, quite a bit. I know you're on the ropes about those, but I feel like they they're definitely have a lot of good musical content in them. Very powerful, dark, and... Uh, I definitely enjoy some of the string quartets. I would say the eighth, of course, which he wrote the eighth in three days. How the hell did he write that in three days? It blows my mind. But uh, um, the eighth is... He was a genius. Yeah, obviously a genius, great genius. And then uh, um, the tenth the tenth string quartet, um, I go through a lot of forms that he's already been known for, and I believe that was in between him writing both those cello concertis uh, or concerti, no S on that, but uh, um, uh, if you want like raw Shostakovich, I would say the 10th string quartet is definitely a great place. And uh, I would say, yeah, those are my favorites. You have the the jazz waltzes, which are very, you know, popular, but I'm more drawn mm -hmm. to the, uh, the more brutal stuff personally. But uh, cool. let's see here. So we already talked about quite a bit of, uh, you know, Shostakovich living under Stalin and how oppressive that regime was to him. Um, what are your kind of thoughts on him as a composer living under Stalin's shadow? You know, like where it comes to the poverty, censorship, et cetera. Like he, you already talked quite a bit about him having a rough life. Do you feel that? That that environment actually changed the way he wrote music. Like it made him write darker music because he did live through such a hard time. Um, do do you think that the Shostakovich we know today was partially because of him living under Stalin? It's like asking: uh, Would have Beethoven composed this, the the work the works he composed if he if he wasn't becoming deaf, probably suffering uh, helps to compose maybe uh, great, r really great music, I guess, unfortunately. But that, that's the way uh, probably uh, 
uh, it's it's how how it's life. So uh, probably this context was um, influenced him a lot to compose this uh, this uh, this huge uh, emotional deep deep symphonies, and uh, I guess. Um, um, that's not only the symphonies. The, the, the string quartets are also uh, in this mood. What, my favorite string quartet, by the way, is is the fifth. It's which which is a. Uh, it starts like banal music and it intensifies more and more uh, in dissonances and and, and it, it starts like like you know very very prosaic very banal music and. And and it's deceptive, and and the, after two or three minutes, the, the music starts to to develop, and uh, you have this this kind of um, how to say that with Shostakovich, uh, this kind of of tricky mind, uh, ambiguous mind, the, the 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 kind of people who were obliged to 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 play a role in in the Soviet society and not to be themselves, you know. And there is a sort of reflection, I think, in his music, and this is why sarcasm and humor, and um, sometimes he used also very prosaic music, very even stupid musical ideas, to to hide maybe something deeper or or, or, or the, the the madness of the society, or to reveal it. That's a composer, or maybe or, or a last thought. Uh, I am sometimes quite quite skeptical about uh, this composer because he composed, you know, it's like Vaughan Williams or Hindemith. He was very prolific. He composed a lot, a lot, a lot of of music, and some and sometimes uh, it it um, it lacks of quality. I, I would say, and uh, you, great recycling of melodies too throughout his works, like. You can hear, like in some of the string quartets, some of the cello concerti and the string quartets too. Like, he recycles ideas, you know, throughout his au revoir. Um, and I, I do feel like that does kind of diminish um, the impact because it is shared amongst different com compositions. But, you know, when you are very prolific, you are bound to repeat yourself on numerous instances. So, like, does it make it less profound? I would say a little bit, um, but I think I think he was not a, a perfectionist like Bruckner was, for for instance. And so the, the, this he was this kind of people who had so many capabilities, so so many so so much potential. So he he composed like a like a mad like a mad guy. He had a this this ability to compose very fast, like Mozart, also a lot of music, but never look look back. Sometimes he, he composed absolutely powerful, perfect, incredible music, and sometimes also that's 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 linked to the context, the political context. He composed propaganda music, and it's even not very very good music. The, the second and third symphony are perf perfectly anecdotal to me. I, I I don't get it. I don't I don't get the project of the musical project he had. Instead, uh, I I I I want to say uh, uh, the, the purpose was uh, just just uh, to to use Sovietic Soviet text and and put music on it. It was just it just just the the, the project was was just that. So. Uh, um, it was just um, how to say that um, um, for the for 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 the um, for he's the event. Yeah, he's appeasing, you know, the propaganda state um, with a lot of those compositions. But cool. Um, so thank you, Mister Sebastian, joining yet again. Um, would you be interested in doing other composers rather than Sostakovich and Bruckner? Like, um, we do have yes. a shared love for Beethoven. Um, I think Beethoven would be a great one to chat about quite a bit. 
I, I could say that I'm, I am quite an expert of the Beethoven symphonies. I, I know them extremely well. And you also know uh, some of the string quartets really well. Yes, I, yes. Yes, sir. So, yeah, we might do Beethoven next. We'll find out. But uh, Good idea. I want to I wanna thank you very much for joining today. It was great to have this chat, just kind of chat about Shostakovich and have someone who is a little bit more knowledgeable than I am about classical music uh, talk about it. And uh, thank you very much. I'll have a lot of uh, links in the description that uh, will point to your exploits. Thanks for the invitation. Yes, sir. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.
Thank you.